Hey guys, welcome back to Vince Bell Customs. So today we're gonna to do a work in progress video of building a new airbrush booth slash priming station in my garage. Now, a while back I did build a new airbrush booth for my studio. It's a dual blower system and I utilized Ventworks, uh, you know, stuff that they uh, did on their YouTube channel. Plus I also bought parts from them. So if you guys are interested, go check out that video. And also you can check out Ventworks as well and they give you guys some ideas if you want to build your own booth or if you want to build something in a garage by watching this video. So the idea with this is I want to not spend as much money as possible. I want to keep this as cheap as I can. So I'll be utilizing a lot of stuff that's in the house, like you know, from building materials that I have in the house, uh, extra plywood from either redoing siding on the house or extra wood that I use for building my airbrush booth in the studio. So. It's gonna be a lot of stuff that I'm just looking around the house and trying to utilize before I have to go to Home Depot and pick up, you know, supplies. So, you can see this is my priming st station in the garage. Now, this was built back like 2010. Uh, my father helped me build this when I was renting a really crappy apartment and I needed something to paint statues in the apartment without getting it all over the place. So we kinda, of, you know, built up this thing. And then over the years, I kinda of been tweaking the station. So when I purchased the house, I brought it with me and I kind of been tweaking it. But right now, it's time to really do a nice upgrade so this way I don't have to worry about uh, you you know use, like, using the shop vac all the time. I could come in, flick on the switch, prime an item, walk away, and come back and it'll be dried. So that's the goal. Plus, I have this fan set up over here where I was always spraying out fumes outside the door and stuff. So I really want to do something a little bit better. So let's get in a little bit closer I'll kind of explain you know what this booth is set up now and you know, what I really want to do with it and make things a little bit easier. Well, a few years back uh, I needed to get something where I can actually get all these fumes out because you know like when I first came here and I was spraying stuff a lot of the dust was also collecting onto the items so I was always sanding more and more than actually getting the dust off the items so uh, right now uh, the shop back looked underneath here and it goes over to this uh, piece right here which is like uh, something you put on the roo your roof for the house with a pipe and I put like these little, uh, you know, cut up these little filters, you know, these are like a $5 filter you get at Home Depot. It's like that big blue thing. So I cut these up in little squares and I usually just put this here. But you can see the primer gets caught on this stuff so fast. I mean, I've only primed like maybe three items and this thing is already almost clogged. So basically I need to kind of get rid of this setup. So uh, what I want to do is I want to take off these planks of wood. I want to take off this stuff here and I want to kind of make this a little bit longer coming backwards. I don't need to make it wider because a lot of stuff fits in this no problem, but I kind of need to redo all this stuff. So, so far I spent about uh, $145. So what I did is I bought another blower for here. So this is the uh, Dayton blower. I forgot the number, I'll link it in the description. I used two of these on my airbrush booth, but I want to use one here in the garage. So the idea is this is going to be set up up here back there at sort of like an angle up there. So as you can see already, I'm losing a lot of space. So I gotta kinda build this booth out a little bit more. This is about 22 inches deep. So I think I need to make it about 30 inches deep. So this way, uh, you know, yeah, about like that. So I still have about the same depth here, but it'll just be pushed out a little bit more. And I don't have to really worry because I never really bring my car in a garage. Uh, so it doesn't matter just a little bit deep because I could always kinda, the idea is too, is I wanna put this on wheels so if I ever have to wheel this outside or if I have to kind of move this around the studio somehow, I, can, I don't have to lift this thing up. I can kind of just like wheel it out somewhere. So that's kind of the other thing I want to do. So the blower will be back there. So I spent about 110 on this blower. Um, I ordered that adapter that Ventworks made for the, uh, you know, dryer vent stuff. So that was probably like another $24 plus shipping and stuff. So we're probably like around like 150 or something like that so far. Now everything else that I'm using that you can see here is stuff that I've had around the house. So, you know, I got extra caulking. I have all this duct work from the previous stuff that I've uh, used. Uh, you know, I have light switches from redoing my switches in the house. I have, uh, you know, metal tape from doing stuff with the old uh, airbrush booth plus other stuff in the house. I have some uh, double-sided foam uh, when I do my ceiling when I put the back piece on with this. So I might need to buy some more foam. Uh, so that's something I'll have to spend money on. Um, I got a lot of plywood up in the rafters in my garage, so I got a lot of, you know, plywood that's just sitting there. It's time I might as well just use it all up, and I got some extra planks of wood and stuff from, uh, you know, the other airbrush booth that I built. So, so far, we're kind of like at that 150 to mark. Um, 
I try to be like kind of plan things out what I might need to spend. So I, I definitely need to decide what kind of filter I'm going to put back here. Am I going to get like a 24 by 24 by 12 or am I going to do something else? I'm not really sure yet. Now, uh, you have to run a wire from this to your uh, your plug and this runs off like 115 uh, 15 volt. So I really don't need to go over to Home Depot and buy a wire for like $14 when I have this uh, you know, surge protector that's actually uh, burnt out on me. Well, actually, these two plugs are burnt out. Uh, so the surge protector still sort of works, but you know what? Instead of going to Home Depot buying the wire, I'll just cut this off and I'll rewire this into here and I'll have a plug already. So that already saves me some money. Um, I think I got some extra wire in my attic too where I can run the other wire and stuff. So I do need to buy a casing for this switch that I can just have like the switch on the side. Um, and then after that, it's just a matter of designing it. Uh, I'm just going to wing this too. I'm not going to go crazy measuring and making everything perfect. I just need something that can take uh, dust and fumes out without worrying. So this duct work that I've had here from building up my other airbrush booth, it's actually cut in half as you can see. And I think, uh, you know, one bag of this is almost like $24 or like 19 So I think this one right here is might be long enough where it would run up here. It'll go out to my vent that's in my garage because I have two vents on each uh, front and back of the garage. So I think this should be long enough. If this isn't long enough, I'll just use this tape and I'll just tape it together and I'll just kind of do it. So there's no reason to go into buy more vent stuff when I have all this stuff here. I have some in here, but it's cut in half as well. So I'll find out whichever one's the longest. So as of right now, we're at $150 mark. Um, I'm just gonna, uh, you know, get everything uh, set up one day, start cutting stuff. I'll have to pry all this stuff down and then we'll just start building this up. I'm gonna wing it. I'm not gonna sit here and make everything completely perfect. So like I said, I think I probably need to purchase some more caulking, some double-sided foam tape, wheels, so I can wheel this around. Or, uh, and as of right now, I think that might be about it. We'll see if there's anything else that comes up. So, uh, it should be a fun project and it should be very cost efficient too. To rip the top part of the booth off, uh, it took a little time only because, uh, I used caulking all over it. So I really had to cut the hell out of it. Uh, but a friend of mine actually gave me a bunch of scrap wood, which is good. So if you know anybody, uh, that's building a house or has extra wood in their attics or garages or crawl spaces, you know, you don't have to go out and spend anything. So he gave me a couple scraps. So what I'm doing is I built the frame of how low it's going to go. So I'm going to be cutting off the top part. So I'll be cutting this part here, there, there, and there off. And then I'll build another flat piece on top of this. So uh, that's where I'm at. Now what I'm doing is I'm leveling this wood here uh, for this spot because this is where it's going to be going. Uh, so if I actually try to level it outside or somewhere else and I bring it in here, it probably won't be as even. And uh, I'm not really worried about if this is completely 100% leveled um, because it, it doesn't really matter. It's in a garage, it's a priming station. But I don't want it to be really off where you put something on there and it rolls or something. So that's kind of where I'm at. So I'm going to take this outside now. I'm going to cut off the top of this uh, and get this all prepped up. I might have to work out the bottom a little bit so I can get the wheels on there. And then after that's done, I start planning out the top portion of it and go from there. You see, I got my frame all set up now. Uh, the wheels are on. Uh, the bottom right front it has the lock on the wheel. I didn't get all the ones with the locks because it's not really a big deal, but at least I'll be able to wheel this around now. If I have to move it or bring it outside, I want to try and make it so the very top of this just goes underneath the garage door. So if I ever need to wheel this outside and clean it or do something, I can get it out of the garage because that's the whole goal with this. Uh, I want to make sure I can actually wheel it outside. So as of right now, uh, we're looking pretty good. Uh, I just need to secure it up a little bit more and then I can start working out the top part. As of right now, uh, we got the top on and we got the sides on. Uh, it's really great height. We got a lot of room in there. As you can see up next to Chuck's head, there's a mark up there I put on the wall. So that lets me know how much clearance I have for the piece. So right now we got plenty of clearance. Uh, what I'm doing right now is I'm kind of securing everything. I'm using some screws. I'm gonna wheel this outside now and I'm gonna kind of sand down the edging, just get it like, you know, so no splinters or anything kind of hit me. Just get it nice and cleaned up as much as I can. Uh, secure it a little bit more and then I'm gonna kind of call it a day after I do some caulking too. I'm gonna do some caulking inside that corner and then also in this corner too, just get it over and done with. Uh, and then I got to call it a day because Home Depot didn't deliver uh, for pickup the 25 pack of air filters. It's always cheaper to order stuff in bulk through Home Depot and do a pickup. 
because uh, if you just go over and buy an air filter, it's probably like $7 a piece or $5 a piece. If you order a package of like 25 and you just pick it up at the store, they're like $3 a piece. So I'm just waiting for them to deliver it. Uh, I also decided I'm going to put a charcoal filter paper roll on this too. After it's all done, I'll order one from that company. I'll link that in the description. Uh, and then I'll have to design it in a way where I can take the roll off and wheel it outside and do what I need to do. The reason why I need this to wheel in and out of the garage mostly is because uh, like every few months I clean out my garage. You know, I kind of like take everything out. I dust everything and stuff. So it's easier to be able to roll this outside, dust it down and stuff. But actually with this airbrush booth, I shouldn't have as much dust anyway because this is going to help with a lot of the priming and I won't get as much. So the idea is building this stuff so I don't have all this stuff and dust in the garage and it'll work out better. So I'm gonna get this cleaned up a little bit more and then when these filters come uh, in, I could finish this up another day. What I did is I went and I used this old can of paint I had forever. Uh, basically, I just figured what the hell, we might as well use it and paint up the whole uh, you know frame and the inside. Just make it look a little bit better. I'll paint the piece that I put in just now another time, but right now, uh, I'm just kind of working out the caulking and just getting this piece set up. Uh, so this basically is just like a frame to hold the filter in. Uh, I wanted it to be a little bit deeper, um, but then if I made this thing huge as I wanted to, it would just be just too big in the garage. This is fine for what I'm doing. Uh, I'm going to have to really set up some different things in there, but for right now, it works out pretty well. And I just have to design the back to hold the filter and then run the hose. That's pretty much where I'm at. But I ran out of caulking though, uh, because what happened is a lot of this old wood I had in the garage is actually kind of warped. So this part over in here, uh, wasn't really touching the bottom of it, so it, it stood up pretty high. So I had to do a lot of caulking over there. But that's not the end of the world. It's it's just you know, as long as it uh, works for priming statues, that's all that really counts. I'm gonna turn this around though, so you guys can see the back of it. Uh, but this back piece that I created with the filter is sort of at an angle because uh, I didn't want it to be completely straight. Plus, I needed some room to design the uh, blower back there because the blower is pretty big. Uh, so you got to really kind of set it up. So let me t flip this around and give you guys a better idea of what's going it's on. It's really off, it's not, but it's not the end of the world. Like I said, uh, it's just a piece for the garage. It's not my good airbrush booth that's in the studio that I need to completely flush and even and perfectly you know, uh, set. Uh, this right now, uh, if I was to build this from scratch and I really got a lot of good wood, what I would have done is I would have got a lot of liquid nails and I would have put liquid nails around all these pieces as I attached them. All I did was some of the caulking I had, I put some caulk in there around this piece so when I nail these down, at least there's some kind of caulking to help with the flush work. Uh, well, I'm just going to go over to Home Depot now and I'm going to go get some really cheap caulk, whatever the cheapest caulking they have. And then what I'll do is I'm going to caulk everything. I'm going to really caulk the hell out of all this. I got to take these two pieces here and attach them like this here uh, because I don't, I like that it holds this piece and this piece, but I don't like nothing holding this side and this side only because sometimes if these bend, they start flapping. I don't want that to happen. So what I'll do is I'll get some more caulk. I'll just put a strip of caulk here and then screw this down. And then that piece, you know, will hold that one. And I have one over there as well. Um, and after that's done, what I got to do is I got to figure out how to uh, set up the blower. Um, if you put the blower straight on like this, the reason why I don't want to put the blower straight on is because over time this is so heavy it might pull out the wood. So I want to have it on an angle so it sort of sits on there pretty well. Plus having it on an angle gives me more room to have it not hit the back of this wall. So I got to kind of keep this flush here. So this is going to kind of go up at an angle like this, maybe a little bit higher. And then what I'll do is I'll have a piece of wood kind of coming up at an angle like that. So it holds it and then I'll caulk the hell out of it and then this will be like that. It's like so. Um, you really want to have this on an angle. If you, if you have good strong metal and you're doing something, you can have it on this side like straight. But it's better to have something holding it because it's really top heavy here and this would pull it. Um, and then once that's done and I get this like boxed up like at an angle, what I'll do is I'll... Uh, Kind of maybe box out the bottom maybe i'll just hopefully i have enough wood or some scraps where i can kind of box it off and then uh go from there um i don't want to have this all completely like just opened up or whatever i'm going to try to clean it up what i might do too is i got some screen what i might do is i might put screen going around this at the end so this way this is kind of screened off and i won't have spiders coming in this all the time because i live by the woods right next to me and spiders are always in the garage so i don't want to turn this around one day and all of a sudden there's just spiders everywhere so i got enough screen that hopefully maybe i can just like wrap screen around this and this and this and then boom i got a nice screen thing so it's kind of 
there. Plus maybe the screen too will help with a lot of dust because this is going to be open in the garage and a lot of dust will come into this. So we'll see if that works out pretty well. That's kind of like my idea for the back. So maybe I don't need the box at all. Maybe just adding some screen in the back will work pretty well. So I'm going to go to Home Depot, get the cheapest caulk they got, come back, caulk this up. And then uh, maybe tomorrow I will be able to paint the front of the box and then uh, start planning out the back of it. All right, so here's the front of it. Right now up top, I uh, just put a piece of uh, foam core up there, but it's actually not wide enough. I need to actually go get a longer piece of wood for up top so I can create the box. Uh, but it's going to be removable in case I ever really have some large statues where I need to actually remove that piece up top. Uh, I also did order the roll of charcoal paper. Uh, hopefully I'll get that in another week. So I'm going to flip this around and show you what the back looks like, uh, give you guys a better idea. As of right now, uh, all I need to do is put the little uh, wooden dowel that's over here on the floor, over it back there, so this way when I roll the uh, charcoal filter paper down and at the bottom, it doesn't like flap, it actually gets you know caught. I'll show you guys that later down the line, but uh, let me flip it around and show you what's up. Uh, the back is pretty much almost done, all I got to do is set up the blower. And then uh, after that, just wait for the charcoal paper and this will be ready to go. Okay, so there's the back of it. Uh, you can see there's a lot of caulking. It is at an angle. Uh, yes, I really don't care at this point because like I say, it's just in the garage. Um, other than that, uh, everything's caulked up. Everything's nice and sealed. It's nice and strong and durable. I made sure that there's a lot of wood and all nail a gun hit everything I needed to hit. Uh, once I put down the, the back piece with the blower, it should bolt on pretty well with the foam. Uh, so basically, what I have to do now is take this plank of wood and line up where I need to do and bolt this down. But before I do that, I gotta get the blower, which is over here. And I have to cut the hole for the blower. So that has a hole right there. And what you need to do is you have to sort of line it up and you got to bolt this down to the piece of wood. Now I do have uh, the template I made for my previous airbrush booth which is going to make my life a lot easier. Uh, I could just put that template down, mark the hole, cut it, uh, put the screws through, screw uh, through this onto there, put that foam around this piece and then when I screw it down and then put the foam around there and then bolt these down with some nice wood screws and then this is not going anywhere and we're pretty much ready to go. Uh, and after that I just wire it up and then uh, basically run the hose out to the uh, vent, which I'll probably do another day. I just want to get this pretty much set up today. And then uh, after that, um, just uh, wait for the charcoal paper to come in and finish up. Okay, so uh, we are pretty much finished up with the back of it. I just wanted to show it to you guys before I uh, turn this around. Like I said, it's not pretty, but it works and it's functional for just priming up statues and parts and stuff like that. It doesn't need to be super pretty as long as it functions. Uh, so you can see what it looks like behind. Uh, I was going to put up a screen around the back of it to kind of, you know, stop all spiders and stuff, but I was kind of messing with it. It's not going to work out. If I really wanted to, I would include the whole back of this and actually put like a big, huge window with the screen there. So at least airflow is going in there. Uh, and then like a hole for the block of wood. But that's if I really wanted to make it look super pretty and perfect. But, you know, we're just kind of making it as a throwaway airbrush booth really for now. Uh, so you can also see uh, I put up uh, the plank of wood with the blower on there. It, the blower is uh, screwed down to that wood. Uh, there is foam all around that uh, area that's screwed down to there. And then uh, all around this edging over here, there's foam all the way around that with nice wood screws locking it down in place. So I did test this out. I got a great airflow. There's no issues. Uh, I really caulked the hell out of it. So it's ready to go. Now uh, one last thing uh, for the plugs and uh, the wires. The gray wire is a nether cord from a surge protector uh, and the, also the black one as well. Uh, so I had a lot of you know old uh, surge protectors in a bucket in a garage and I was planning on throwing out so I figured let me just cut off the uh, you know the wires and I can use them down the line because at Home Depot if you want to get this type of wire by the yard it's like two dollars per yard or unless you buy it in a big pack. Um, if you want to just get like a, like I think it's like a six foot or nine foot uh, cord that uh, comes with a three prong plug on it, that's like 10, uh, 10 to $11 or something at Home Depot. Or you could buy the plugs and make your own type of wires. But you know, if you're ever uh, throwing away surge protectors or shop vacs or power tools, you can always just cut off the cords, throw them in a bucket. You never know if you'll need them down the line. So you save yourself some money. 
So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna flip this around. Uh, I'm gonna start planning out the top of it because I got a plank of wood for the top part of it. I'm waiting for the charcoal filter paper to come in the mail. I just gotta design that where it's removable so this way if I ever need to roll this out in the garage I can do that without any issues um, and then I got to work out the ductwork so uh, I'll probably uh, do that when I get the ductwork I'll probably do that once I get the um, you know uh, charcoal filter paper in the mail and then we'll come back with a final part of video we'll do some tests and we'll see how this works okay out. so I am all done with this now uh, what I did is a quick test we'll go in there we'll test it again just to show you what's going on uh, so what I was thinking is down the line this might get you know like a, a upgraded uh, but for now it's working out well you know I might add some shelves down at the bottom uh, what I did for now is I just put up a nail screwed on two pieces of wood just to hold the charcoal filter paper roll up there for now uh, what I was thinking of doing, we got some of those like door hitches and stuff at Home Depot. What I might do is I might design one where I put up these pieces of wood and it's sort of like hitched up. And then when, if I ever need to move this outside, I could just kind of like uh, unscrew it and they just kind of like come down and I could pull that piece off. Uh, we'll figure that out down the line. Um, but you can see uh, the ductwork goes up around there, comes up around there and it goes out to this vent over in here. Now the vent's not completely closed, but... Uh, I still need to get some kind of air in the garage most of the time, so it should work out pretty well in the long run. I'll have less dust in here, I'll have less fumes to worry about, and definitely in like, the winter time, once I get a heater in here too, everything should work out pretty well. So I don't have to worry about too much dust getting in there and getting into the heaters and everything. Uh, one other thing what I might do too is down the line is maybe if I feel that this booth needs to be enclosed a little bit, what I could do is I could design some kind of like doorway where I can have doors closed and maybe like the doors closed this way. And then what I might do is this piece up here, I might get another one and maybe do a thing that it comes down lower here. So this way I can have a two thing here where if I need to airbrush or paint or find larger statues, I can take that piece off and then I can have a lower piece here. So that's what I think I might do. That might be the second thing I, I'm gonna do, but uh, I'll have to test this out a little bit. But when you kick this on, I, got, I don't have that loud vacuum anymore. It works out really well. Um, now this is an old can of a uh, primer that's kind of screw, uh, screwed up on the nozzle. So I just use this for like bases and stuff. But this is an old uh, gambit head that a, a friend of mine uh, commissioned. And I just had a couple extra ones in the thing. So I'm just kind of priming it. So you can see, hitting this, uh, I mean, I'm not getting any blowback in my face now. Breathing in, I'm not getting any fumes in my face. And uh, with it being up there with the vent, I'm not smelling any fumes coming in. A little bit of fumes, but nothing major. But that's because it's kind of a windy day and I got the garage door open, so. But I mean, in the long run, this is gonna just make things a lot better as far as dust as well, too, because, uh, you know, I, the other setup was just way, way too dusty, and I was always cleaning the garage, and there was always dust in here coming back into my face and all that stuff, but now I'm not getting any of that stuff anymore. It's really working out well. Plus, it's quiet. So I can come in, I can kick this on, spray something, go into the, you know, back into the studio, let it dry a little bit, kick it off. And I don't have to worry anymore. So that's pretty much my booth. Uh, it might be upgraded down the line. So if there's future videos where I'm ever airbrushing in here, you might see this a little bit more advanced. Um, but other than that, it's working out great. So like I said, I think uh, what I really might do though is set up this second piece that comes down here a little bit. I think that's I think that's what I'll do. Uh, maybe if I come across some more scrap wood, I think I'm almost all out. Uh, what I'll do is I'll design another piece down there. So. You know, but a lot of the statues are too high, so that might not work. I don't know. We'll see. Uh, it's always good to have, like, extra options and stuff. But the charcoal paper rolls down through the back up there, uh, comes down to that little wooden piece, and I could just keep rolling out this charcoal paper so this way I don't destroy my uh, filter so soon. And, you know, it's a little bit cheaper in the long run. These filters, I know I've seen uh, people's filters, and, you know, one session of priming up a statue, the filter is almost already clogged. So... It's better to have something like this. So that's my setup. Hopefully you guys like the way everything worked out. Thanks for watching, and we'll be back with some more videos.